Um, today we are here for a new panel session from UVA to industry, how to hack into your career. So today for this panel session, uh, I will be your moderator. I'm Caroline Urillo. I graduated UVA in 2014 with a degree in systems engineering, and now I'm a data scientist at Microsoft. And our panelists today are Melissa Phillips, data scientist at CCRI, who graduated the Master's of Data Science program in 2020. Hope McIntyre, lead data scientist at Storyblocks, graduated in 2016. And Catherine Schinkel, data scientist at Stitch Fix, who also graduated from the Master's of Data Science program in 2016. So the setup of the panel today is going to be the first 30 minutes, uh, basically just a Q&A between myself and the panelists here. And then the second 30 minutes, we'll have the opportunity to be more interactive where we'll all break out into separate uh, breakout sessions. So each one of us, the four of us, will have our own breakout sessions and you, the audience, will have the opportunity to join those breakout sessions, ask your own questions, uh, whatever is top of mind for you in the world of uh, careers in data science, we're happy to help. So to, to kick things off, uh, Melissa, Hope, Catherine, I'd love to start uh, by hearing more about each of you. Could you please walk us through your background, including your time at UVA and uh, what led you up to your current role? Sure. So um, I was initially trained as a math teacher, and that's what I thought I was going to do. I got married pretty soon after graduating college, and so I followed my husband around into different countries and wasn't always able to find work as a teacher just to credentialing issues and that sort of thing. Um, I moved to uh, Charlottesville about 10 years ago, and I couldn't work at first. I was on a visa that wouldn't allow me to do that. But once I could work, I got a job as a math teacher in a local private school here in Charlottesville. And that school was starting this computer science initiative. And I thought, as a math teacher, I really wanted to try to give my students all the opportunity to learn how to program. And seeing as I had no training in that, actually, um, I did some professional development courses to learn how to do that and learn how to teach it. And so I did. I brought that program to the school. And, but I, I found that I really started to enjoy programming and wanted to figure out how to incorporate more of that into my career. Um, in attending a math competition with my students, uh, there was, it was actually a nice all girls math competition, but they had a speaker come and she was a data scientist. And she shared about how her job was kind of a marriage of math and computer science. And I hadn't heard of data science as a discipline before, but I thought that's exactly what I want to do. Um, I researched and since I was here in Charlottesville, I found out about UBA's program. And so I thought, well, if I get in, I'm going to do that. So I applied, I was accepted. Um, and then I attended last year. And it was a real whirlwind. I learned a lot of things. <laughs> it was quite intense. Um, and I felt like I needed a little bit more training, at least especially on the job, because I just was coming out of such a different career. Um, so I applied for an internship through Forge, which is, uh, was formerly Hack Siebel. And I was able to do a summer internship last year with a little bit of additional training. And then I um, interned at CCRI. And then after that, I stayed on because they offered me a full-time job. So that's where I've been since August. That's great, Melissa. Really cool story. I can go next. Um, so I am a double who. I went to UVA for my undergrad. Um, I studied math and thought I was going to be an actuary. So I pursued a role in health insurance for a bit and actually realized I was drawn more to the data than the health insurance part of my role. And part of that led me to hear about this new program at UVA. It was its second year looking for applicants. And my husband also is a, a data scientist. And we both thought, oh, this could be a really cool opportunity for us. And we both applied and went to UVA for our master's program. And afterwards, I really wanted to live on the West Coast. I thought it would be a really cool opportunity to go out there and try to find a new role. I was less interested in working for the government at the time. And a lot of the roles I was looking at at that time were government based. And so my first role I landed was at a venture capital firm. I worked as a consultant for a few months, rotating at different companies that they had invested in. And from there, I stayed on board with one of the companies. It was a marketing company and my first real data science role. Um, from there, I worked in startups for about three to four years and learned a lot on the job but building on the tools that I had gained at UVA. And most recently, I've been at Stitch Fix. So this is the largest company I've worked at. The team is about 140 data scientists. 
And it's been a really great opportunity to keep building into my skill set so far that I've gained. That's awesome. I love how how you and your husband were both double who's and you got the opportunity to do the, do the startup world and then move into, I guess, a little bit bigger of a company. Really cool. I guess that leaves me. Um, so my name is Hope McIntyre. Um, I got my start in my career as a um, software consultant, you might say. Uh, so working in the DC area, um, primarily is what would be considered a product manager or a project manager. Um, and so I had a lot of fun uh, technically building all of these platforms uh, with a team of engineers. Um, but what I kept seeing time and time again was uh, the data uh, that was existing in these platforms was kind of sat unused. Uh, and around that time, uh, kind of early in my career, data science was really a narrative in the news about the opportunities for predictive analytics, um, natural language processing. And so I started making this connection of that's my interest area is, is leveraging this data that's kind of sitting in all these platforms um, and doing interesting stuff with it. So uh, that led me to UVA um, and an interest in this kind of one year long boot camp, as Melissa and Catherine alluded to, it was a, a lot of work, but really uh, rewarding. Uh, and after that, uh, I came back up to the DC area and joined where I currently am, which is Storyblocks, which is a stock media company um, with a library of short clips of video, images, audio, uh, which is music and sound effects, available for digital storytelling. Uh, so we work with a lot of creatives like YouTubers, podcasters, people building documentaries to get them the content that they need to tell their story. So my team, uh, the data science and machine learning team is primarily responsible for our search experience. So we're building machine learning algorithms and leveraging natural language processing um, and search technologies uh, to build that into our platform so our users can get uh, the content they need when they need it. Yeah, that, that's awesome. I can definitely relate to just being really drawn to different parts of, of the data and story. Storyblock sounds like a really cool company. Um, my path is a little bit different from you all in some ways, but then very similar in others. So I also, since I was at UVA, but not actually at the master's in, in data science program, I really found my passion for data scientists, data science during my fourth year, during my capstone, uh, where I got the opportunity to partner with the university hospital, uh, doing a, basically a, a machine learning project where we were predicting post-surgical outcomes. So really getting to see all the different opportunities where, where data science uh, and predictive analytics can really make an impact in people's lives. Um, and then moving on to Microsoft, uh, where I've had the opportunity to work on a huge variety of projects, whether it be Internet of Things or uh, marketing to different consumers. Uh, there's, it's amazing how many different fields data or industries data science can really uh, be valuable in. Um, so thank you all for, for giving your introductions. Uh, to kick off some more questions, uh, Melissa, what is your biggest takeaway from the Masters of Data Science program? Yeah, it was kind of tricky to narrow it down to one, but um, <laughs> I think communication for me was the biggest surprise. I didn't expect that. Um, I did not know a lot about data science when I went into the program, but learning just the ways that my skills as an educator, as a communicator would be useful was, was huge for me, just to really feel at home and feel like there was a reason that I was doing this in a way that I could actually um, have a skill set that I had already um, been fostering. And so I think of the communication, you know, when you're doing a data project, you have to communicate with your client to kind of understand their needs and how important and crucial that communication is and to keep it ongoing throughout the process. And then also communicating with the team working on it. So for our capstone, there were three of us and I was often the one getting everyone on board and who's doing what and keeping everything going along just by my nature as a teacher. And so that was really fun for me and just seeing how, you know, that's still such a valuable part of the process. And then also the data ethics, standpoint that we um, got to investigate a lot, I think also rides a lot on communication, just making sure you're being as open as you can and allowing for feedback from all sectors just to hopefully show you some blind spots um, where maybe you're missing things or maybe just inquire more about the data. The talk before this kind of talked a lot about that as well. But I've, you know, I've been learning that communication is a huge part in that as well. So um, that was a surprise for me and also probably my biggest takeaway from the program. 
totally agree that communication is really crucial in our field. And I, I can totally see how being a teacher where you're communicating so much, especially to young minds, would be a, a great skill set to bring to the, the data science world. Uh, hope. Data science is such a broad field. Which disciplines, languages, or technologies would you recommend focusing your energy on to get into the field or to continue to grow in the field? Yeah, I totally agree with you, Caroline. Data science is a really broad field um, and maybe more challengingly beyond that, an evolving field. Um, so I really like to think of data science as any role that helps derive insights from data. And so in that sense, kind of data science becomes an umbrella term. And so defining what skills or languages to learn becomes a big challenge and almost daunting task. I know I've felt overwhelmed at times of what I felt like I should know. Um, so when I'm talking to people either early in their career or kind of peers of mine uh, in the middle of their career, um, I like to recommend um, looking at data science as sub areas and then finding the one that aligns both to your interests as well as your strengths. Um, so examples are uh, in recent times, I've seen uh, data scientists comma computer vision or data science comma business intelligence. So there's really starting to become this kind of second layer of specialization within data science. And so if you can figure out which of those is of most interest to you, then it becomes a lot easier to identify the skills um, that you should be honing in your career. You can get that by talking to people in those types of roles or looking at job descriptions for those types of positions. Um, and it becomes, again, a, a much more manageable task to take on. So that's, that's my biggest piece of advice. Yeah, I totally can, can relate to, to how wide the field of data science is and feeling overwhelmed with with saying, okay, well, there's 10,000 things to learn. I obviously don't have the bandwidth to do all that. Um, but I think, I think the other thing that's really cool about data science is even if you start in one area, because you're still building relevant experience, if you learn about a new area, you can then transition into that other area as well. Absolutely, I, I totally agree. I think there's kind of a core skill set that you can develop regardless, obviously learning Python or R, or the kind of the arc of model development from training and validation. Um, so yeah, definitely good to build there uh, as you as you grow. Great. Catherine, out of, uh, out of, I guess, the Master's of Data Science program, what resources would you recommend it? What would you, re I'm sorry, outside of basically the, your education that you got through the Master's of Data Science program, which resources would you recommend, whether it's different learning platforms, what different resources would you would you recommend to people? Yeah, I really, I really love this question because I consider myself as someone with a growth mindset. So I'm constantly growing, constantly learning on the job uh, to Hope's point. I, we have a base of tool sets, but certain problems might require certain implementations that we haven't used before. Um, but there's a lot of resources to take advantage of. One thing I wanted to mention that maybe is less uh, available typically than just online resources are building your network and connecting with other people in the business. This has really helped me learn of more like on hands learning opportunities, such as a applied deep learning course that I attended in person. I tend to relate more to structured in-person or virtually in-person learning than others. So that's what I've kind of leaned into in my career. Another really cool opportunity has been a book club on my team. So we've been going through reading a book on Bayesian statistics every week, a chapter, and then we'll meet together to talk about it and learn and, and think about how we can apply this particular chapter or things in the book to our problem set. And that wasn't something I had done in a role before, but it's been a really great opportunity to continue growing on the job as well. I love the book club idea. I've actually, I haven't heard of that one before. I've heard of kind of people collaboratively taking classes and of course, kind of the independent classes, which I think is uh, a great opportunity just to really get that breath. And I know some of my favorite platforms are things like uh, Udacity or Coursera. Um, and it's just great because no matter what your learning style is, whether it's 
being interactive, like you said, being in person, or it's, you know, watching videos or uh, communicating or looking, looking at written text or practice problems. Um, there are really a, a huge variety of different things you can really get your hands on. Yeah, definitely no shortage of resources. Um. Great. Thanks, Catherine. Melissa, now being an industry, is there any advice you would give your former self while you were in school? Um, so I feel like my answer to this question kind of touches on a few things that have already been said now, but um, but we have alluded to that the program, um, the MSDS program is, is hard and challenging and there's a lot going on, especially if you don't have a big, uh, strong background in computer science going in, which I did not. And I would tell myself, don't, don't freak out, <laughs> calm down and enjoy the process and focus on the things that um, are interesting. So I think like what Catherine was saying, is like if I would tell myself to focus on how I learn best because you can't master it all in, in one um, year. <laughs> and, and kind of what Hope was saying too, like you will kind of dig deep into like a certain area. Uh, you can't be an expert in every piece, but, um, but you can enjoy it all, enjoy the moment, enjoy that kind of breadth that you will get in a program like that. Start to think about which places you like to dive deeper into. Um, and then think about the ways you learn and how you will try to access that knowledge in the future. Cause there will be on the job training. Um, but there'll also be times when you probably should just, you know, on the side kind of continue on with your own learning for your own edification. So uh, definitely it would be probably just chill out, <laughs> enjoy it more. Cause I definitely felt a lot of stress. Um, also having kids at home and trying to balance the family life too. It, there were times when I feel like I should have just relaxed and enjoyed it. <laughs> I love that advice and I'm going to be trying to take some of that own of your advice, you know, take it home with me as well. Uh, I, I, I really like your points. Well, I think one reflection point for me is um, I think in school, a lot of times you can be really focused on, you know, trying to just get the best grade that you can rather than trying to be genuinely curious about the material you're learning and really focus on just absorbing as much as you can. Uh, so I, that's like one thing that's top of mind of, for me. And I'd also, I'd, on this particular question, I'd also love to hear from Hope and, and Catherine, if you have anything uh, top of mind that you'd like to share. Yeah, I would, I would again add, like I, in my master's program, I learned so much, but I think what I learned the most was what was out there and being able to remember, oh, I, I've heard of this type of modeling that could be used in this use case, let me spend more time there. And having that like in the back of my mind has been super helpful. Um, while knowing the nuances of every single model, learning in one year was too challenging. And I think that was what I was trying to do at the beginning. What I look back, I realized that just even knowing what was out there was a huge help um, in my career. Yeah, I love what Catherine and Melissa have said about kind of enjoying the journey uh, and recognizing it really is a lifelong learning pursuit if you're choosing this career. Um, so yeah, I would definitely say those. Um, one of the other things I did to try to um, absorb as much knowledge as possible is kind of building frameworks in my head of understanding. So trying to group concepts. So I might not know uh, the details of every implementation of a model, but if I know one model is like another model, then I can start making connections and, and feeling comfortable in, in other spaces. That's great. I feel like it's it, the pattern recognition you're talking about is like your brain is behaving like an ML model for <laughs> ML models, which I love. Yeah. <laughs> Born to be a data scientist. <laughs> so meta. Yes, love it. <laughs> so uh, the next question, um, Hope, uh, what do you look for in a company uh, data science team to know it will be a good place for you personally? Uh, and what are some potential red flags that you might want to look out for as well? Yeah, great, great uh, question. I get this question a lot from when I'm talking to kind of recent alumni from school or other mentees. Uh, I think it's important to recognize as most interview books will tell you, you're interviewing the company as much as they are interviewing you. So be ready for that. Um, and, and for data science roles, we talked about how um, 
broad and encompassing the idea of a data scientist is. So um, I really recommend two things uh, to people looking for a company that's a good fit. The first is parsing the expectations of the role. Uh, so you really want to know um, that the type of work they're expecting from you is the type of work you're interested in, as well as align to your strengths, where you want to grow and, and what you enjoy doing. So you can really find that out by looking at the job description, talking with the hiring managers and asking some tough questions about what they expect from a data scientist and how they define it. Um, the second piece of advice is I always look for companies with a lot of data and a lot of predictive problems. Uh, for me, fortunately, Storyblocks has both in spades. Um, but I think when you kind of have that uh, intersection, that's really the nexus of the opportunity to do really cool work in data science. Uh, when the data is available to you and the company has problems that can be solved with kind of the machine learning and data science toolkit. I love that. And I think those are both really good points. You really want to keep in mind how you, how you could see yourself growing at the company. And I think um, the things you mentioned about having a lot of opportunities and, and data, uh, business problems that can be solved with data are really crucial for that. The other thing that uh, I always think about as well when I'm talking to a new company is the, the culture of that company and the culture of the team that you're talking to. Uh, and really trying to reflect on what's important to you on, on your search of your career. Are you trying to get a promotion? Are, are you really trying to like shoot up, shoot up the, the ladder? Or are you really looking for a healthy work-life balance? Um, or, you know, are you really looking to spend all your time doing the most technical thing? Or maybe you want to spend time uh, really focusing on your stakeholders. Uh, those are, those are all things. And to really, first reflect on, upon what you're looking for and then really grill into the company that you're talking to of do they have the opportunity to offer those things? Yeah, absolutely. Another thing that um, has come up before is kind of the data maturity of the company. So the culture you, you were talking about, Caroline, of the company as a whole, but also the team. Um, I've seen kind of recommendations to ask about peer review within the data science team. Um, like shared understanding or expectation of language use. It, you know, if, if each team member is writing code in a different language, there's not a lot of opportunity for collaboration. Um, does the company have data infrastructure or is that gonna be part of your role? So, so, so some of those questions that you can parse into about the company's specific data science culture can complement that, that company culture really well to give you a good picture. Yeah, I totally agree. That, that's really important to think about as well. So Catherine, what does your day-to-day -day look like at Stitch Fix? Yeah, um, I feel like this is always a trope that every day is different, which is very true yeah. for me. Um, for those who are less familiar with Stitch Fix, it is a personalized styling service that is helping people find what they love. And that is done through either fixes where we would send you a box of items chosen through human and algorithm decisions or a newer um, option called shop where you can look at items recommended for you within um, your app or website. And so I particularly work on the merchandising side of our team. So the algorithms team has three large pillars, client um, styling and merch. And then there's also a horizontal team that is building platform tools to what Hope had mentioned around data maturity, having these tool toolings that I can use as a full stack data scientist and focus on building with the tools that exist to answer the business problems that I'm focusing on at that time. And so a typical day might look like scoping out a new feature and communicating with business partners about what they might be hoping for in their optimization, that tool that we have them use. Um, we're supporting decisions around um, what styles should our buyers and planners think about buying and how much, and how can we support that human decision process with data that we have. Other parts of my day-to-day -day could include writing ETL code, digging into data, or running an analysis, um, looking to results of an experiment, or um, 
even experimenting within our objective function for the optimization engine that we're working on. Another highlight is around communication. So communication is really important to document and build out either a deck for a different audience around what, what did I find and what can we do about it? Um, so that would be kind of a, a round out of a typical day, could be a sprinkling of these different parts of the project, considering where in the life cycle I might be. That's super cool to hear. And I love too how, you know, some, some people only have the opportunity to, I feel like to really just do like one of the six things that you mentioned. So it's super cool that you, you really get to see, see kind of the end to end and be involved into the end, in the end to end process. Yeah, here at Stitch Fix, we have a lot of ownership over our data science products, which has been a really great opportunity to see end to end, again, with that platform support. So I might not need to kick off my own instance to run something on my computer, um, but having that support makes it a lot easier to, to pursue that entire life cycle. That's great. Uh, Melissa, one, one thing I feel like, especially during COVID times, is, uh, is burnout uh, is top of mind. Uh, how do you com out, combat burnout and stay inspired to do your best work? Um, yeah, I definitely agree that the pandemic has made that hard, um, especially, as I said, I have kids, so we're home all the time, and um, that can be a bit of an issue. But one of the reasons I wanted to say at CCRI is that emphasis on work-life balance, and we talked about that in my interview. And so part of that, though, is for me to maintain those boundaries. And so um, that's one way is just being clear about when I'm working and then when I'm done working to make sure I don't mentally go there and try to be present for my family. Um, another thing, leaving education, um, I was worried that not having that day-to-day -day interaction with a variety of people would be hard for me. And especially now I'm, I'm at home <laughs> and I interact with the screen, but um, I try to seek out places in the company where people are coming together from different um, functional centers. And so they have some great initiatives. There's an ethics working group at CCRI and also an anti-racist action committee. And I've got very involved in those just because I find those places of inspiration and they're doing the work that I want to see done in the world. And so um, that's been really great and inspiring for me just to kind of keep connected to those bigger questions, those bigger issues, and then to be sure when I leave work that I'm, I'm mentally gone from there too. I love that. And I feel like the organizations you mentioned uh, really, you know, help keep you centered around like what's important in the world. So that, that's great to hear. Uh, Hope, what are the biggest challenges you, you feel that you tackle in your job? Uh, anything that really keeps you up or night, at night? Or is there anything that really, you know, is your favorite part of your job? Uh, yeah, so um, I think one of the biggest challenges uh, as a data scientist actually connects back to uh, Melissa's um, first response about the, the importance of communication as a data scientist. So uh, one of the biggest challenges I face is deciding what to work on. Um, so that might surprise people, but as I've mentioned, Storyblocks has more predictive problems than our team can handle. Um, and so part of my job, it really becomes sorting through those priorities and helping the company find the most impactful um, algorithm change uh, to influence the business. And so my role there is really advocating for the, the projects and the solutions that I see technically. Uh, and so I really enjoy that actually. It's one of my favorite parts of the job is the ability to explain algorithms to people who aren't as familiar with them and talk about the impact we could have. Uh, but it is also challenging uh, to do that on top of the technical work that it takes to actually get the solution in place. Yeah, I can definitely relate to enjoying the, the feeling of when you kind of take a really technical concept and translate it into something non-technical where your business stakeholder can really understand the impact of what, of what you're doing. It's super powerful. Uh, so I'm glad that, that you enjoy that as well. Uh, Catherine, I know you talked a little bit about uh, you know, your start and starting an actuary and then being more inspired by the data than in particular healthcare. But uh, is there anything 
like more specific where you had like an aha moment of like data science, I think would be a really good fit for me. Yeah, I think one of the aspects that I really was excited about was the creativity of data storytelling. Um, I was in a very client facing role at the time. And so part of the team that I eventually moved on to was sharing a data story to a team, um, to a client team and seeing that arc and having people in that meeting say, oh, wow, I never thought about it that way. Really brought, I know, some life to data that I had typically just seen in spreadsheets, um, especially with that actuarial background. And so that was when I really saw that creative aspect. I also studied art history in college and I had originally thought, oh, maybe creativity and, and art doesn't fit in a data science role. And I realized that's not, that's not true. I use those skills a lot around data visualization or how to tell an engaging story. And that hadn't connected with me until I had really seen it firsthand. That's, that's awesome. And I actually relate to that a lot. I, when I first started at Microsoft, uh, I was started as a data scientist, but I've always had a passion for painting. So my second year at Microsoft, I actually did user experience design because I was like, I have this creative outlet. I need, I need to explore it. But um, I actually found that data science, as you mentioned, gives you a, a really good outlet to not only be technical, but to be creative as well. So uh, I'm glad I'm glad we're together on that one. Um, and looking at the clock, I think I think we're about at time. So thank you to all the panelists for uh, taking the time to participate in the Q&A section. Uh, now I'd like to invite the audience to join the breakout rooms. Uh, you can find the breakout rooms in your, in your email uh, if you registered for the conference, or if you scroll down under the live stream to the description of this panel, you'll see each one of our names have a breakout room session, uh, which you can click and join. Uh, where each of us will be in our own breakout rooms and it'll be an informal Q&A. Uh, really hope all of you can join. Thank you everybody for joining.